Okay. So this is a remake of an old video with a sound didn't work. Um, and um, actually some stuff has changed since then. So this is a look at my Proxmox setup. Um, and this is why everyone should have a home server. Because there's a wide variety of stuff you can do with it. Okay. Um, so we're going to start from the bottom up. The bottom, we have Mac OS High Sierra. Um, so this is great because I use basically this guide. I used the High Sierra one, um, but I did cross-reference this one because this one's most up-to-date for the newest version of Open Media Vault. Um, and um, I used the High Sierra one because I was originally running Wii Message with Wii Server right here. Um, and that um, has issues on Mahove, and this apparently has issues on Mahove as well, um, which should, with, with the full disk access thing, as you can see here, um, so running on High Sierra is just generally better for what this is, um, and then I used to use WeMessage, but now I use AirMessage, um, so that is the whole reason this Mac OS VM is running. It uses a lot of resources, um, but it's, at least it's on one machine, so I don't need to keep a second Mac OS machine up 24-7, uh, even though I do have Mac OS machines I could theoretically do that with. Um, this is just easier um, to have a dedicated server. Okay, the second thing is Lubuntu. Um, so this is a graphical version of Ubuntu. I know it's weird to have a graphical version of Ubuntu. I really didn't want a graphical version of Ubuntu. Um, but... It's this printer, this Dell C1760NW, has weird Linux driver situations, um, and all of the tutorials I've found only work on graphical versions of Ubuntu. I don't know, maybe they would theoretically work on Ubuntu server, but I tried it on Debian server, or like, you know, just non-graphical Debian, and it didn't work, so I just decided to play it safe and use a graphical version of Ubuntu. Um, besides just being a print server, I also host a Minecraft server, um, in this graphical version of Ubuntu, because it makes it easier to manage the files for the server, um, even though I could theoretically host that in a not graphical environment at this point, but, um, you know, why spin up a separate container or whatever when this works? Um, and I'm hosting the Minecraft server with NuKit, um, which means it's a bedrock edition server. Okay. Um, next thing is Open Media Vault. Um, which there's not much to see um, in Prothma because it's not a graphical environment. But here it is. It's a NAS um, solution. Um, so I used this to uh, duplicity. I never got working. I wanted that for off-site backup. That's still a work in progress. Um, but I use this to host files and media servers um, because we ripped all of our DVDs and uh, CDs. Um, um, that's all served up through Plex, and there's also an SMB share, which is used to add new um, media content, but is also used by me to transfer files between computers. Okay. Um, and then the next thing is Windows. Uh, so this is Windows 7. I'm not going to bother booting this up. You've all seen Windows 7 before. Um, this is used by me because I happen to have a Chromebook. Um, I have a real Windows laptop, but it's not especially portable, um, and I have a Chromebook, and occasionally I want to be able to access um, Windows applications, so I'll connect up to this. It's uh, very high latency, but um, it works well most of the time. Um, and because I only use this occasionally, I just boot it up whenever I need it. Um, the final thing is this. This is a container, not a virtual machine. All of these have been, have been virtual machines. I could theoretically install Open Media Vault in a container, um, but hard drive pass through to a container is maybe a little weird, and then Open Media Vault also uses a weird custom kernel, so I just installed it in a VM. Um, so this container, its sole purpose is to run PyHole, um, which is a universal ad blocking thing. Um, I um I'm I have some issues with running a universal ad blocker. Um I would like more whitelisting control. Um but um also ads got very annoying um on mobile devices. Um so this was my solution. Um
I don't know, I may eventually take this offline. It's, uh, it's fine. Um, it actually does block a lot of ads um, on mobile devices, and it even blocks them in some apps. Like, I run, uh, what's it called? I run uh, IR Remote on my Galaxy Note 4, and that normally has annoying banner ads at the bottom. I mean, it gets rid of them. Um, I actually don't mind banner ads that much, but um, there were some ads that apps that had like pop-up ads and stuff, and it sometimes gets rid of those as well. But it's not entirely consistent, and sometimes I get rid of ads that I don't mind keeping and would like to support the developer. Like I don't technically mind the ads in IR Remote, though I don't mind that they're gone either. Um, but th there's um, some things where I like specifically wanna support the developer and I would like more whitelisting control. But um, for now, I haven't found a better solution, though this may go away eventually because I'm not entirely happy with it. Um, but that's what this container is for. That container is for pie hole. Um, okay, this was much more concise than the first video and it actually has audio. Uh, the first video I went over the install process, which I'm not gonna do now. Um, it's not that hard. There's weird glitches, but, um, you can figure it out. And, um, if you can't, then too bad and just use a real Mac, because that's probably what you should be doing anyways. Um, okay. Uh, that is all. Uh, thank you very much. I'm getting a lot better at making concise videos. That's great.